Assalamu alaikum my friends. Welcome back to another episode. Marish Muhyiddin here. Today is a big day because we're going to review the Quran Your Timeline. All of you who are still watching this have stuck by my side and I hope this has been really powerful for you. I've enjoyed your comments and I've enjoyed uh, you guys getting excited about this, as excited as I am about this. You know what I would love? I would love for you guys to send me photos of your drawings of the Quran Your Timeline or your kids' drawings of the Quran Your Timeline or you're teaching it to someone else because I really want to spread this message far and wide. And you're going to see why in the next few videos, why, if you don't know already, why this is so powerful. This is going to set us up for understanding the Quran. And once you know the, once you have contextual fluency in the Quran, it opens up a whole world of understanding. So, and I talk about this in my book, Revelation Essentials, that there's Arabic fluency, linguistic fluency to the Quran, but there's also contextual fluency. Understanding why things were revealed. What was the story on the ground? What is happening that caused certain verses to be revealed? And when you have that contextual fluency, it really opens up like your whole understanding of not just the Quran, but how the Quran is applicable to your life. So well, today what we're going to do is we're just going to review the Quran Your Timeline and I'm going to quiz you. I don't know if you remember in the last episode, I told you I'm going to quiz you. Today is the quiz. So get ready. Okay, so you remember the Quran Your Timeline, we drew it as a circle. We cut it in half. We did the rule of the four H's. So we put Hira up here and Hijra down here. And this is the Meccan period, which is all blue. And this is the Medinan period, which is all green. The Meccan period is 12 years. The Medinan period is 11 years. So this goes from one to 12, and this goes from 13 to 23. This, then what we did is we cut it again into quadrants and we separate it into four quadrants. Early Meccan quadrant, the late Meccan quadrant, the early Medinan quadrant, and the late Medinan quadrant, right? One, two, three, and four. Remember these post-it notes? And then what we did is we further, and we did that with the other two, which is Hamza and Omar right here in Quran year six and the Treaty of Hudaybiyah in Quran year 19. Then what we did is we cut this into 23 years and we went through each of the 23 years. Shall we do this real quick for you guys? Are you guys do you guys know this? Let's review before the quiz, okay? So, and I'm gonna tell you all the mnemonics. The first three years, remember one, two, three, blast off, right? So one, two, three are the private years, private, private, private. Year four is the public year, because the first three years are the private. That brings a lot of heat. So in year five, the prophet says goodbye. He sends half of his uh, companions to Africa, to Abyssinia. So that's in year five. Year six is the conversion of Hamza and Omar. The conversion of Hamza and Omar ends the early Meccan period, a period of individual persecution, and brings the late Meccan period, which is a period of collective persecution. And this is epitomized by the ban years. Remember, one, two, three, B, A, N. These are the very difficult ban years. Those ban years end up really weakening the, um, the followers of the Prophet. In fact, in Quran year 10, we have the long year because it's a double digit year, it's two digits, so it's longer. So it's a long year of sadness. And three things happen, particularly in that year. The death of his beloved wife and inner strength, Sayyidina Khadija, radiallahu anha. The death of his uncle, who was his guardian protector from the oppressive Quraysh, and that was, his name was Abu Talib. After Abu Talib died, he had to run away from Mecca because he was no longer safe in the city. They were going to kill him. He went to Taif, and there at Taif, they mocked him, they ridiculed him, they pelted him with stones, and he had to flee the city of Taif, and now he's a man without a country. He's a man without a homeland, and he's in between two cities, and he's alone in the desert, and he has this incredible moment of nearness to Allah, where he complains to Allah in a way, in a loving way, saying, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do? I'll do whatever you need me to do, but I don't have anything to show for the last 10 years. So help me, help me. And what happens? After the year of sadness, in year 10, we have this amazing moment in year 11. The mnemonic is that 11 rhymes with heaven. So that's the, the miraculous night journey where he goes from Mecca to Jerusalem, Jerusalem to the heavens heavens down to Jerusalem and back to Mecca. That's called the Isra and the Mi'raj, right here in 11. And then after that, he's a man on a mission. He knows he has to complete this task. And so he starts trying to find a getaway plan, an exit strategy out of Mecca. And so in Quran year 12, he meets 12 pilgrims in Quran year 12. That's an mnemonic, 12 pilgrims in 12. In year 12, agree to take him into the northern city of Yathrib. And that is called the Aqaba Pledge. Okay, that's the Meccan period. That sets up Quran year 13, which is the Hijra, the migration. 
After the Hydra, we had that mnemonic. Do you remember the mnemonic here? Look, I still have it written down here, guys. Remember this? I have this like, all these scraps of paper. Remember this, the Hydra resulted in battle upon battle till Hudaybiyah. We have these letters here. Let's see here, right here. H-R-B-U-B-T-H. And we're gonna use those letters to write out the events. So Hydra, let's take a look here. I'm gonna put this down right here. The Hydra resulted in battle upon battle till Hudaybiyah. So the Hydra raids Badr 1, Uhud, Badr 2, and the trench, and then Hudaybiyah. So that is the early Medinan period, a very difficult time for the Prophet, peace upon him, and the companions. And by the time they were at the Battle of the Trench, they thought it was all gone. They thought they were going to get crushed, many of them, and they thought, like, this is it. It's over after 18 years. But Allah found a way out for them. And so after that, in Quran year 19, they formed the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, which was a ceasefire, right? In 19, it was our final H. And after that, the Meccans broke the treaty, so the Prophet in Quran year 20, the mnemonic is 2020 vision. Remember, he knew one day he would come back to Mecca, he had 2020 vision. So in Quran year 20, he comes back to Mecca, the conquest of Mecca. Year 21 is a year of full grown adulthood. It's the expedition to Tabuk, to take on the Roman Empire. The Romans never show up, but it's a huge victory for the Prophet regardless, because it allowed him to flex his strength. And by that point in Quran year 22, the rest of the tribes who are, who are opposing the Prophet, they're like, dude, if we can't, they probably said, I don't know if they said dude back then, but they said something where they're like, if we can't beat them, join them. So in 22, the mnemonic is peace, the year of the peaceful delegations in 22. And then finally in Quran year 23, it's the last year, which means that this is the farewell Hajj of the Prophet, where he gives his incredible sermon at Arafat. And then that's followed shortly after by his death. So here you have it, my friends. I'm gonna remove these things. This is the Quran year timeline. And as you can see, it looks like a Q. And it looks like a Q because it's about the Quran. It's the story of how the Quran was revealed. Remember, take a look at this. And this is what I developed into this right here. You guys can see this. This is the Quran year timeline. This is in my book, Revelation, the Story of Muhammad. Believe it or not, guess what? That same timeline is in the Quran draft that's gonna be coming out soon because everything works according to the Quran year timeline in the Revelation system. So let's, let's see if we can go to the very beginning of this book. How does this book begin right here? Oh, let's see. The Quran year timeline here also. Everything works in this system according to the Quran your timeline because it's a map to never get lost. And in my uh, upcoming book, if it's not out already, it should be out by now. You can get information about it on my website, Revelation Essentials. I'm going to take you through all of this and the very basic essentials of the Quran your timeline. Now, I told you there's going to be a quiz at the end today. So get your pencils ready. We're going to do a quick quiz right here. And let's see if you can beat me. I'm going to say... A number and you're gonna tell me the event. Quran year one, private. Four, public. Five, Abyssinia. Seven, I skipped six, seven. It's for the first of the ban years. What about Quran year 10? Oh, 10. Mnemonic, what was the mnemonic? Double digit year. Why was it longer? Oh, long year of sadness. 13, Hijra, come on, easy, right? 16, oh, the Hijra resulted in battle upon battle. Oh, Ohud, you for Ohud. What about 19? Oh, 19 was an H, right? We know that, Hardabia. 20, 2020 vision. 21, full grown adulthood, top book. Let's just do 22, peaceful delegations. 23, farewell Hajj. You guys know this, I know you know this, but do you know what happened in the Quran year nine? Uh, ban years, right? What if I do the opposite and I t say a, uh, an event, can you tell me what Quran year it happened in? What year did the Prophet, peace upon him, send people to Abyssinia? I think you know the answer, five. What year did the Prophet, peace be upon him, go to fight the second battle of Badr? Well, we just said Uhud was 16, and we know the second battle of Badr was after that, so it's in 17. So you guys are now seeing the power of the Quran, your timeline, and sorting out all of these details. Now, these are just 23 of some major details. There's so many other details, but when you have these major ones, you can attach the minor ones to the major ones, the, the smaller details, and you have now this whole understanding of the Quran and the life of the Prophet, the career of the Prophet, peace be upon him. 
what we're going to do in the next episode is I'm going to talk about how the Quran was revealed and the themes of the Quran and how the themes of the Quran speak to the moments that the Prophet was going through. Peace be upon him. This is a really, really important. And I think this is why a lot of people get stuck reading the Quran and struggle to get through the first few passages of the Quran because they're not reading it in an order that makes sense to the development of the chronic narrative. And I really want to kind of spend some time going through this in the next few episodes so that you understand how the Quran was revealed and how the Quran is actually compiled because the two are not the same. I'm also going to be talking about some cool tips and tricks to impress your friends and maybe impress yourself too and how the Quran in your timeline can be really useful when you're navigating years, ages of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Gregorian years and stuff like that. So. We'll get to all of that in the next episode. Like I said, if you want to get more information about the, the Revelation experience and the system that I have and the, the books that I have with Re Revelation Essentials, the story of the Prophet Muhammad, then Revelation the Quran, you can go to my website, therevelationexperience.com. It's wonderful being with you. I will see you guys soon, inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum.